let me be here um, um, today. Um, I just wanted to go back right to the beginning actually to um, when the staff from school were talking about work experience because I just want to say how important it is um, and, um, and it, um, it, it can be something that you know is given out in January and suddenly it's, it's Easter and oh we've got a lot and oh, we've got all this going on and don't get anywhere with it. Um, there's a couple of reasons why it's really really important. If you're applying for degree apprenticeships and we're going to go through what they are now um, you're asking a company to invest about £100,000 in your education and to pay you a salary all the way through. And, and to turn up with just A-level results or just B-tech results, I think is a big ask um, to get them to do that. So companies are going to ask you, what have you done about it so far? And, and work experience is a really neat way of answering that question. I, I was so interested I did this. But also coming to UCAS personal statements as well. You know, I, I sometimes coach people that I'm working with on, on how to write their UCAS personal statement. And let me just tell you that the only people who struggle with it are the people that have got nothing to say. And if you haven't got any content on there that's relevant to what you want to do, then that's a real tough 4,000 characters to, to write through. Work experience nails it for you. So if you haven't got your work experience placement um, sorted yet, I'll say a couple of things. First of all, parents, um, you can be at the absolute centre of that. Put a post on your Facebook page, on your LinkedIn page, saying that your son or daughter is looking for work experience. Um, use your network, that's going to be super, um, super helpful. If you're contacting a company from scratch, they don't know you, you don't know them, and you're saying, hey, can I come in for two weeks? That feels like a big ask sometimes. There's no other part of our life where we say, hey, you don't know me, hey, I don't know you, but can we spend a week together? Um, so, um, so sometimes it's great to just start that conversation, but get it going really quickly. So uh, put in your subject line, can I get some careers advice? And ask for 15 to 20 minutes of time, and then you develop the relationship, and now you're in the door and they're going um, to be helpful to you. There's two things I can, I can give you um, to help you with that. If you, um, uh, well, you've got uh, my great first job on here, uh, I'll put this slide on, it's at the end. On our Instagram page and on our TikTok page, if you go to the link in the bio, um, you can click on that and there's a webinar on there that says how to find a great work experience placement. Um, so if you're struggling with it, then, um, then, then take a look in there and, um, and, and watch the webinar. It's, it's 45 minutes long with some young people on there who are talking about how, how they found a, um, a placement for it. So I just wanted to add that in as a, as a, as a, as a starting point. Um, so I run a non-profit organisation called My Great First Job. My background is, is in apprenticeships. Um, back in 1989, well my, my career in apprenticeships started in 1987. 1989 I set up a really small business um, to help young people get their first job. Um, there weren't any apprenticeships then, it was YTS. And, um, and I sold that business about six, seven years ago. And, and now spend most of my time um, in schools helping young people navigate their way from from education um, to employment. And, and what I want to do first of all is just um, think a little bit about um, apprenticeships because there's five levels of apprenticeships. And if you'd have left school at the end of um, year 11 with your GCSE, you've got a job on Moulton Park or on Bracknell's in the town or something, you probably would have started on an intermediate apprenticeship, never called an intermediate apprenticeship, always just called an apprenticeship. It's a level two qualification. Five GCSEs at grade four and above is a level two. You probably, you're going to have that already. So if you'd have left then, you probably would have done an intermediate apprenticeship. You might have done an advanced one. That's level three. You're all working towards level three qualifications at the moment. A levels are level three, B tech level threes. Um, and if you leave at the end of year um, 13 and, and get a regular apprenticeship, a degree apprenticeship or a higher one, small business, um, local, you're probably going to be doing an advanced apprenticeship, so you're going to spend a bit more time in that level three space before you move on up. Um, higher apprenticeships are level four apprenticeships. Um, your training for those is likely to be at a college or with a private training provider, or it could be that the employer itself is a really, really big employer and they deliver that training um, themselves. Quite a lot of those in accountancy, quite a lot of those in IT, um, a, a bunch of them in engineering as well, um, so level four apprenticeships. I'm here really today to really focus on degree apprenticeships because I want you to know they exist and I want you to know that it's a viable option for you. And I normally start the presentation, I didn't this time, so I want to talk about work experience by saying if you were like sat there thinking before we started today, oh, like, do you know what, I've heard the university bit now, I wonder if I could sneak off. Um, before we talk about this. Hey, listen, lean in, guys, because I might be able to save you £40,000, and you might be able to do the same course and have that money saved for you as well. 
degree apprenticeships. We're going to talk about those today. And, and just knowing that there's master's apprenticeships there as well. So you can go to university just as normal, and at the end of it, you might think you might want to do a master's, you've got to fund that, you've got to pay for it, but there are level seven master's apprenticeships available as well, so you can link in with a company. You just need to know they exist, because that's not going to come on your horizon just for a while. So look, there's, there's four components of a degree apprenticeship. We start on the, um, on the left, on your left hand side there, a degree. But I want you to know it's not, it's not a degree you have to explain to anybody, it's not equivalent to a degree, it's not a degree from a university you've not heard of, and know that you'll be familiar with the term Russell Group Universities. All of the Russell Group Universities offer degree apprenticeships, most universities offer degree apprenticeships, the two that don't for certain are Oxford and Cambridge at the moment. <coughs> Um, but, but all of the other universities do, so it's not going to be something you spend your life saying, oh, yeah, well, I did this, and it's sort of like a degree. In fact, I, I, it's a level six, so it is a degree. It's a degree, and that's it. The times when it's not is if it's a professional qualification. So some um, employers who are taking on degree apprenticeships in accountancy, um, they may do it through ACA or SEMA or ACCA instead of the degree because the professional qualification is so embedded in the career route that they do that instead and you, you're going to know that that exists anyway because you'll have, you'll have already researched that career. So you're going to do a degree. Um, I thought I'd hear no student debt and it was great to hear Olivia talking about you know, people thinking it as a graduate tax almost because, because I think that is the, the reality but fundamentally you won't have anything to repay. And you won't apply for a student loan if you're only applying for degree apprenticeships. There's no need to. Um, I'm going to encourage you to apply for both. Um, but you, you won't have to. The reason for this is because the employer is going to pay for your degree for you. Now, how are they going to do that? And why would they do that? Well, what the government do at the moment is say to every employer um, that uh, has a payroll, a wage bill, of more than £3 million. Uh, that's about 125 people. So that gives you the size of company. If you've got 125 people, um, your wage bill is about £3 million, everything above that, um, taking that as a threshold, half a percent of that wage bill is going in a digital pot that can only be spent on apprenticeships. It's called the apprenticeship levy. Um, you know, we heard today there's going, to be a, um, there's going to be a general election, and I've no doubt apprenticeship levy will be, will be part of that, how it changes around and stuff. But right now, half a percent of that goes into a digital pot and employers can only spend that on apprenticeships. Now, if you're a, a, a business on, um, where are we, um, Malton Park. If you're a business on Malton Park and you employ 150 people, 25-ish of their salaries, half a percent going in a pot, not very much, might pay for one person to do um, an apprenticeship at a level two. But if you're um, Amazon, if you're BMW, um, your wage bill is enormous. Half a percent of enormous is a lot of money, and the companies are using that to pay for people to go to university. And I'm going to show you the different ways they do that. Now, there's another thing up there around training, and it may be that, we stay with BMW for a moment, BMW may say, do you know what, we, we pay for 150 people to do degree apprenticeships, so we want them to feel BMW, so um, every month we might do uh, a, a Zoom call, a Teams call, um, just a bit of extra training so they know what's going on with the brand. It's, a, it's never a stretch, it's, it's always just a bit of stuff. Now, on top of all of that, you're going to get paid. So you're going to get a salary, the, the average salary this year that I've been helping people on to degree apprenticeships is £23,500. So, people straight from 6-4 are getting a salary of £23,500, going to university and having no student loan to repay. And I think if your daughter or son were to come home from school and say, um, hang on, what, you, you're telling me this guy came in and said, you can go to the university, um, you're going to not have a student loan, and somebody's going to give you £23,000, you would probably think that they've missed the boat somewhere. You know, that, that can't quite be right. But it is right. I'm going to show you the different ways um, that it works. So, really, uh, over the last few years, there's been two key models of a degree apprenticeship. So the first one here is where, probably as, as adults we might recognise it as apprenticeships a bit more, it's like mostly work with some, um, some training on the end. So this could look like, um, I go to work Monday to Friday, I go to Monday to Thursday, I go to university on Friday. It could be, I go to um, work for a month, I go to university for a week. So it's 80% work, 
20% university. And it would be fair to say that's the most common model of um, degree apprenticeships. However, there is the other model, which is absolutely the flip side. I go to university just as normal. Just as normal, I go for the first year, but instead of coming home at the end of the first year, getting my job at McDonald's um, and then getting ready to go back again, I go and work for that business for 10 weeks out of the 16 weeks that you might get off. And I do that at the end of year two as well. Year three, I work for the business full time. Year four, I'm back at university. So it's a mainly university model with a bit of work. So 80% university, 20% um, work. Now, I ran a webinar just really recently about engineering um, degree apprenticeships. And I had three guests on. And these are the three guests here. These are their LinkedIn um, profiles on here. By the way, um, uh, these guys don't know each other because they all just came onto the webinar for, um, for a bit of time. Tom's from Scotland, Alex is from Wollaston, and Emily um, is from Hailsham. And um, so they didn't know each other, they dropped on. And I asked them at the end of it, um, what would be the one piece of advice that you would give to a year 12 student or a year 13 student um, who was following in your footsteps? And every single one of them, the only thing they said was get on LinkedIn. So if you've not got your LinkedIn profile sorted, if that's not on your radar yet, um, get on that over the summer, start using it. Um, they all said it and neither of them, none of them heard the other person say it either. So, Tom, um, nuclear engineering degree apprentice, got his job through LinkedIn actually, just used his LinkedIn profile and clicked on it and applied for the job. Um, he's at university full time for a year and then goes um, into work after that and is on a day release basis. Um, he's on £23,500. He's at university full time, um, no um, fees to pay, and he's getting a salary while he's there at £23,500. Alex um, works for um, the anti-terrorism department within the government. He's an electri electrical engineer from Wollaston. He was on a mentoring program that I ran. And he goes to university once a month. He goes on a block, a week at a time. And then Emily is a civil engineering apprentice, degree apprentice, and she goes every Friday. So there are all different models um, of, um, of attendance coming out now. A couple of years ago, it was like those two slides previously, all of that or all of, of the other. Now we're seeing some different models. Um, coming up. Now I put this slide up because um, if I'm in a school delivering the presentation around degree apprenticeships, I normally say to the young people, who's heard of L'Oreal? And the hands go up. Who's heard of TUI? Yeah, we all go on holiday. The hands go up. Who's heard of Amazon? We've all bought stuff. Yeah, we're all familiar with those brands. The brand on the right hand side, Leonardo, and I'll say to them, who's heard of Leonardo? You know, there might be one hand goes up out of 180 young people. Um, um, if I say to them, EY, um, you know, there might be a hand goes up about 180 people. And the reason for that is because they haven't heard of those businesses and so they're not going to apply for them. And I see that young people navigate towards brands that they're familiar with. If Coca-Cola have got a degree apprenticeship up there, if Sky News have got a degree apprenticeship up there, they're applying for it. But if they see Leonardo, they see EY, Leonardo working in the defence industry. So thankfully, Leonardo aren't selling their defence systems to 17-year-olds in, um, in Northampton. Um, so we're no need of those. EY, one of the world's largest firms of business consultants and accountancy, you haven't come across them yet. So if you see a degree apprenticeship, it's going to be pretty much most time going to be a really, really big company. So don't click away from it just because you haven't heard of the brand. Click on it and see what's um, and see what's in there. Just while we're here, um, and so most of the police forces, if anybody's looking to go to police, most of the police forces run police constable degree apprenticeships. In fact, Northamptonshire Police are running events this week um, to launch their degree apprenticeship application for, for next year. The NHS um, run degree apprenticeships. Um, it's a bit more tricky for those if you're looking to get into the NHS with degree apprenticeship because if you want to work at Ford then Ford have got a HR department who will look after all the systems. Whereas NHS, there are so many little departments, little bits of it. You, you can't just apply to the NHS, you have to apply to every NHS trust or every hospital, and they're all different, so that can make it um, a bit trickier. So I want to tell you a little bit about Sam um, here. Um, Sam and his colleague Mary sometimes come onto a webinar that I run, and um, Sam didn't know anything about degree apprenticeships. He's just finished one at PwC, um, one of the world's largest firms of business consultants again. And um, he went along to Birmingham University, University of Birmingham. He wanted to do software 
um, development. Um, I think he needed two A's and a B to get in. Um, he's off on his university open day. Olivia was talking about those open days earlier where you go and have a look around, you go to talk and um, talk to the staff that are there. And um, just imagine for the moment that this was the, the software development um, session and they said, right, you can just leave out that door now and um, go and have a look around. And there was a gazebo outside and on it, a PwC had just written, we will pay for your degree. Now, if all of these people over here had been stood in front of that gazebo, um, Sam would have gone to the University of Birmingham, he would have done the same course, he would have had the same friends, he would have lived in the same apartment, um, he would have gone to the same lectures, he would have had the same colour lanyard in, and he would have had a student loan to repay of around about £40,000. But, because if there was nobody there and he went and spoke to them, and he said, what's this? And they said, well, if you want to do software development here, we sort of sponsor some of the places here, so if you apply to work for us, we'll send you here to do your degree of friendship, and you'll go in the model of going to university um, full time. And that's exactly what he did. And at the end of the four years of his degree of apprenticeship, um, he, were, he was given the, the task, if you could get a 2-1, which is a, a grading of degree, we guarantee you a job. He got a 2-1, his colleague Mary got a 2-1, but you don't have to accept the job. So at the end of it, Mary said, thank you very much for paying for my degree, thank you very much for giving me a salary all the way through, I'm off now. And there's absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. So you, you, nobody can make you work afterwards just because they've paid for your degree. It's really, really accepted that some people will just want to move on. So don't feel that, that, that you're tied into a, a company to do that. So my advice um, when you're going on university open dates is if you think, oh, I might want to find out if somebody can pay for this for me, then ask at the university, do you have any degree apprenticeship employers sending people on this course? Now, it might be that they say, well, you know, we don't have anybody on this course, but there's a course connected to it um, that, that, that is 50% of these modules, and it's got some other modules from another course on it, that, that we do, do you want to have a look at that one? I probably want to just check it out. So ask at the University Open Days, um, can I talk to somebody about the degree apprenticeship opportunities that, um, that you offer? So, how will my fees be paid? Again, just like the university, um, you don't see that money. The employer, um, through the government's um, online system, sends it straight to the university. But what about your accommodation, food costs and all of that? Well, listen, you're not going to apply for a student loan. So that extra maintenance bit, you're not going to have. So you're going to pay for that out of your salary. But listen, my youngest son is in university at the moment. He gets a maintenance loan of about seven, seven and a half thousand pounds a year. And, um, and his accommodation is £6,000 that he's paying for. So if you go to Starbucks in City World, um, over any time in the summer, you'll find him working in there to try and get as much money as he can. Um, so he's got about £1,500 out of his maintenance loan to pay for his food and stuff over the year. If you want a degree of apprenticeship and you're on £23,000 and you've paid six, £7,000 pound for your accommodation, you've got £1,000 a month to spend, not £1,000 a year, £1,500 a year. You've got plenty of money. Um, Mary and, and um, Sam would always say we were the richest students in the room because we were getting a salary um, in one and in there. So if it all sounds a bit too good to be true, have a look at this slide because this is where it gets a bit tricky. Now, we were talking earlier about university applications. One application, in effect, five universities, one click, it's gone. Yeah, you've got to write a personal statement. Your school will be really supportive with you doing that. But once it's done, it's done. You're going to get some offers in and you'll spend your, hopefully, your spring working hard to get the grades. Um, with degree apprenticeships, um, and I really hope they change this at some point, but the reality right now is somewhere between December and the end of February, you'll be applying online. Now, when you apply to university, one application to five universities, you can't send a different one to each one. Uh, what you do with degree apprenticeships is BMW might say, oh, well, on our application, we want 500 words on why you want to work here. And Jaguar Land Rover might say, oh, we want 500 words on which of our projects you're most excited about. And Red Bull might say, we want 500 words on which of our company values you most align with. And give us an example. So it's a lot of work to apply for. And then after you've applied and then gone through the first stage, they often invite you in for um, a video interview. It's a one-way video interview. If you had applied to work at Marks and Spencer, same to his test girl like that, you might, you'll be familiar with them. It's a situation where there might be some tests in there as well, and that's where most people fail. And they fail because they don't prepare for the interview. They think, oh, this is going to be, it doesn't feel like a proper interview, it's a video interview, it's one way with some questions. 
and haven't read what they're looking for, I think I'll be fine, I'm quite clever, I'm quite bright, and then that's where they fail at that point. So a ton of prep got to go in there. Then they might invite you in for a video, we might, that's probably February, March, now we're at sort of Easter time, they might do a live video or telephone interview. And now we're down into um, so April, May time, and it might be your assessment day where you go in for a whole day. Last week I was preparing a lad um, for, for Ford actually, um, for a degree apprenticeship assessment day. And it just felt so unfair because he's also, I gave him some stuff to do on Sunday, and then I met with him on, on sort of Tuesday night and said, how did it go? He said, Dad, I haven't been able to do anything, because, loads of it, because I've got the A-level exams next week. So it's tough. It's really tough because at the time when you might be wanting to really concentrate on those exams, um, some people are still going through the process of it. And you might still have an interview to go through. But I guess what they're saying is that we're going to invest £100,000 a year. So we've got some extra hoops we're going to jump through there. We're going to pay the salary, we're going to pay for your degree. Um, I just think it, you know, it's hard work. Um, going back to that engineering one where there were the th two, two lads and the, and the young lady on there doing civil engineering, I just also want to let you know that there wasn't an A or a B grade on that page. So sometimes we can think about degree apprenticeships only being for um, people who are the academic high achievers. Everybody on that page have got straight C's. There might have been um, um, predicted to get slightly higher, but they've got straight C's across there. So don't think it's just for the academic um, high achievers. In my experience, the people that get degree apprenticeships are the most tenacious people, the people that are challenged. Dale, when are we having our next appointment? I need to get this done. They're organised, they're applying for 10 or 12 of them. They've got a spreadsheet set up or a book set up, so they're really, really organised. That, to me, is the skill that we need um, to be able to do that. I want to tell you a little bit about Kieran. Kieran's from... Um, um, hi, I'm Ferris, um, from Ferris School, so um, by Rushton Lakes, if you're familiar with that. And the reason I want to tell you about Kieran is because, as you were hearing earlier, this isn't an either or, you can apply for both. Now, I did a presentation at Kieran's school, um, and he'd applied to Loughborough um, to go to university to do international business, and it, uh, his, um, his reserve offer was, um, was Bournemouth, so we've got Loughborough and Bournemouth all, all lined up. And then he messaged me afterwards and he said, Dale, can I apply for a degree apprenticeship as well? I said, yeah, of course you can. Of course you can, which he did. He applied for two or three of them. Now, the thing with him was, and you can see on here, he's a level seven finance apprentice at Jaguar Land Rover. Um, so what he did is he applied for them, he got his offer, and on results day, he came up to see school, got his offer, found out he got into Loughborough, found out he'd also got into Jaguar Land Rover, and that's the day he decided which one he wanted to do. So you don't need to decide before then. You might decide before then, but it's perfectly okay for you to sit with a university offer, one, two degree apprenticeship offers, and then decide on the day which one you want to do. Now, all of those institutions would much prefer that you've decided before that, but you don't worry about that. It's just about you. You can hold both offers on there. Um, Kim started on £19,000 a year two years ago, works at home two days a week, works at um, Coventry Jaguar Land Rover two days a week, and um, goes to um, uh, University of Birmingham one day a week. What I will say is, because we're connected on LinkedIn, um, oh, his, his feed is always full of stuff they're doing. Oh, Jaguar Land Rover apprentices are off to Barcelona this weekend for a training weekend. Oh, they're doing the Three Peaks Challenge next month. So companies really try and look after you to make sure you get the, the, the experience that they want you to um, now this is um, probably where I came in from the work experience a bit earlier. Um, this was their advert for it. To be eligible for our finance degree apprenticeship programme, the very first thing it said, you need to be able to demonstrate a passion for finance and a strong motivation for the role. And then a bit further down it almost says, oh, oh by the way, you're going to need these A-levels as well. So it's being able to demonstrate the passion, pretty tough thing to be able to do at the age of 17, demonstrate passion for finance, but work experience nails it every single time if you've already done that and it's relevant to it. So that's sort of where that work experience um, sort of comes in. So do one thing. There can be some online learning you can do, some online courses. Um, Open University is a great place for getting some free online courses that um, last about two or three hours, um, but, but look amazing on your uh, personal statement, because um, nobody's going to ask you how long the course was, but just the fact that you've got written on there, I've done an Open University course in, um, that's always going to look great. So I think um, if you're leaving sixth form, um, 
uh, with your A-levels and you're looking for an apprenticeship and it's going to be with a small to medium company somewhere locally around here, I think if you turn up with your A-levels, your BTEC level 3, maybe you've had a part-time job somewhere and I think um, if you do something at, at the weekend, you play football, you play basketball, you play it, um, you play a musical instrument, you're in the scouts, you do D of E, you're going to be fine. You're going to get a great job and there's going to be a ton of people that want to employ you out there. But I think if you're saying, could you invest £100,000 in me, pay for my degree, and give me a salary while I'm doing it, I think you just need something to bring something more to the table. And that's where it's about something that's relevant <coughs> to the degree apprenticeship that you really, mm -hmm. really want to do. do you know, for me also, it's it, like, that's also going to work great for you on your personal statement for going to university as well. If you want to get into a course that's really competitive, then what are you bringing um, that's relevant, shows your interest beyond the... Um, uh, beyond your A-levels. I'll tell you a little bit about um, this lab here. It's from Abbeyfield School. Um, in some schools this year, I've been running a um, degree apprenticeship mentoring um, program. And, um, and Jamie's just actually got two degree apprenticeships. Um, I think what's interesting about um, Jamie, he applied for three. Um, one was a company called Leah. Um, one was a company called SPS. Never heard of Leah, never heard of SPS. He hadn't. One was Caterpillar. So he was hoping to get the job at Caterpillar because that was the brand he'd heard of. Um, he had never heard of Leah, hadn't heard of SPS. Um, he got offered Leah, he got offered SPS, and he's taken the job at Leah because when he went for the interview he couldn't believe how amazing it was um, that was there. Um, he's starting on £24,000 straight from his A-levels. Um, so, so it's important to know that there, there is an example of somebody who applied for something um, that he, he wasn't sure about, hadn't heard of the company. But what he did in terms of his personal branding and stuff, um, Jamie runs a, um, I've been into the school the year before and run a session on, um, um, on personal branding. And he, he used his Instagram account um, on there, so there is Instagram account there. And every time he does anything to his car, he just puts it on his Instagram account, a separate account just for his car stuff. And so when he applied for jobs and when he was applying for them, he just sent them his Instagram account as well and said, look, you can see how passionate I am about this because here's an account I run that's only about mechanical engineering. And they talked about it when he was at his interview and they were thrilled with it. On the other side um, is a lad I'm hoping he's going to get a degree of friendship this week. It's Harvey. Um, Harvey's from UTC in um, Silverstone. And he wants to work with Lamborghini, Lamborghinis and McLarens, who wouldn't? Um, and so he runs a TikTok account that is all about Lamborghinis and McLarens. And he goes to car meets and he takes videos of them. And he said to me, um, as we were doing his CV, Daniel, do you think I should put my TikTok account on my CV? And I was like, well, I don't know, let's have a look at it. And then I saw it, and it's like, right, you've got 1.4 million likes. I'm like, yeah, we're putting it right at the top of your CV. Um, we want people to really know how interested you are in this. And so right at the top of his CV um, um, is, his, is his TikTok account, there's a link in there. So just other ways that you can showcase when you're applying for these things to say, I'm really interested, work experience, your social media accounts, some online learning that you've, um, that you've done. Um, if, um, if you want any information on my great first job, then our Instagram account um, and our TikTok account have a link in the bio. All of our webinars are free on there. You can, you can scroll down and watch any recordings of it. And, and parents, we run the same content on Facebook as well uh, and on LinkedIn. We also send a parent's um, email out about once a fortnight with details of webinars, details of degree apprenticeships we've seen, details of um, free learning experiences, open days and whatever that we've seen. If, um, if you want to sign up for that newsletter, then just use the QR code um, on there and um, you can just fill in your, your name and your email address and you'll get an email from us once a fortnight um, with all that information on. Um, if it, uh, like Olivia, if anybody has got any questions about it whatsoever, um, happy to stay down the front here afterwards and, um, and stay as long as we need to. Thank you very much.